see Jumbo, everyone. Hi. Or as uh, Jumbo means hello in Swahili. Welcome to Taurus Black History Corner Internet Program. I am your host, Catherine Hunter Williams, along with my co host, Miss Catherine Blake. Hello, everybody. All right. Today I'm going to teach our story about North American slave revolts, one which took place in Richmond, Virginia, started by Gabriel Prosser, but also in the African diaspora, Haiti. And we, you, as I go along, you'll see the connection. Uh, I was going to say about the connection. Dr. George Moss and I talked about General Toussaint Overture on our first program held in July. But on the last program of the month, we changed it to teach about American African identity and how some of our people still have a problem of giving themselves an identity. And we hoped, we hoped, mm -hmm. that we helped them to solve that issue. There is an old Nigerian proverb that says, if you have no id, which is ID, identity, you are no one. Remember that. If you have no id or identity, you are no one. Oh well. Oh well. Miss Catherine said, oh well. <laughs> if you would like this, to see that particular program, go to allpointstv.com and type in Taurus Black History Corner. And please let us know what you think. The date it was held was on July 27th. That was the last time we had our program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Later, Miss B will be teaching our story about a woman who had a strong legacy in the civil rights movement, Miss Eda Savage Jennings. Jennings. Okay. But before Miss B teaches our story about her, let me finally finish our story about Gabriel Prosser. Oh yes. And how General Toussaint L'Ouverture, Overture influenced his slave revolt in Virginia. And excuse the hat, but it's raining and flip. And sometimes I have a bad That's hair day. That's a there. cute hat. Oh. You're wearing it. Oh, thank you, Miss B. Mm -hmm. Looking listen, good. Sweet, listen to her. Looking good. Thank you. All right. Gabriel Prosser was born in 1776. Now, they don't know his date or anything like that because they didn't keep birth certificates. And he's also known as Gabriel Prosser, which is still say, I don't know, know why they said that as Gabriel. I don't see no different in the spelling, Prosser. He was a literate enslaved blacksmith who planned a large slave rebellion in Richmond in the Richmond area of Virginia in the summer of 1800. Information regarding the revolt was leaked prior to his execution, of course, of course, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he and 25 followers were taken captive, captive and hanged in punishment. My Lord. That's 25 men, probably women was in that. You know it. And yeah. it was black and white, you know, a mixture. It was a diverse group of people. Not, it was not just all black slaves. I'll get to that. <laughs> That's the connection there. Mm. I'm hoping y'all catching on. In reaction, Virginia and other state legislators passed res restrictions on free blacks as well as prohibiting the education, assembly, and hiring out of slaves to restrict their chances to learn and to plan similar rebellions. In 2002, the city of Richmond passed a resolution in honor of Gabriel on the 202nd anniversary of the rebellion. In 2007, Governor Tim Kaine gave Gabriel and his followers an informal pardon in recognition that his cause, the end of slavery and the furtherance of equality for all people, has prevailed in the light of history. Now I want to go back up here to this about this rebellion because in Ferguson, this is the one year mm -hmm. anniversary, anniversary of Mike Brown, Michael Brown. And um, it was one young man, they, you know, they were out there doing a peaceful march. Because that's how we react sometimes to mm -hmm. stuff. That's how all people react 
when they're feeling oppressed and they're being mm -hmm. brutally attacked by police or by any group of people, they react out. So he, they had this peaceful march, but it was one young man that shot at the police. And that said it all. I mean, Jesus Christ is set off and they shot him. Hmm. And they said, he, uh, you know, they were showing this picture with him laying face down in a pool of blood. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I haven't heard any more about it. But that's a form of rebellion. So it's different types of rebellion. You know, there could be a, I have never heard of a peaceful rebellion, but peaceful marches. But peaceful marches sometimes don't do anything. Well, they're saying that he fired the first shot, right? Yeah. The young man, and he's a young man. Mm -hmm. He shot at them first. That's what so, allegedly. Well, allegedly, and uh, that's a word that's being thrown around a lot. Mm -hmm. Allegedly, mm -hmm. because of uh, the simple fact. God, let me take this thing off because it's hard dealing with it with this hat on. You can't say this kind of stuff because of. Uh, uh, of saying that this is exactly it, it's mm -hmm. not it. Mm -hmm. So now the word is allegedly. Yeah. He shot the first shot. Yeah, I'd like to see the body cameras that uh, they're supposed to be wearing to prove that they haven't proved it yet, have they? Well, there's not a lot of information other than it's on fire down there. Well, who says that we're supposed to take their word for it? Well, we don't have to take that, that word right. you know, until they do a thorough investigation. Absolutely. And then most of the time, the cop, whoever did it, gets off. Even and though he gets off, but those body cameras will show. It'll show. Mm -hmm. it, it will Who show. fired the first shot? It'll show. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Back and I know that that young man was not the only one that had a gun there either. Probably not. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, and more than likely. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. It was others that had mm -hmm. guns here. And I'm not just saying men. I'm saying women too. Uh, yes, you're right. You know, so, hey, a lot of stuff came along. It's coming along with this sun that's going down in Ferguson. But in Baltimore, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. I mean, it's still on fire around this country. That's what I call All it. All over the place. It's all fire. Yeah, so. All right, back to Gabriel Prosser. Prosser's Rebellion. Uh... Sorry, excuse me. Gabriel was born into slavery at Brookfield, a tobacco plantation in Henrico County, Virginia. Gabriel had two brothers, Solomon and Martin. They were all held by Thomas Prosser, the owner. As Gabriel and Solomon were trained as blacksmith, now that was good, they trained him as a blacksmith. Mm -hmm. Their father may have had that skill. So maybe it was the father who trained him and not uh, Mr. Prosser. Gabriel was also taught to read and write. And you know, when you get to reading and get to writing and you learn stuff, mm -hmm. you learn that this is not really just it. Right. On a slave plantation. There's more to life than just this. Thank you. That's why they didn't want us to read. Right. If you read, and that's why I be saying, telling people, I encourage you to read. Read. Because it opens up a whole new world to you. Mm -hmm. You can be just in one room, but if you got books you can read, that's right. the world is open up to you. And enlightenment. Yes. And that he was taught to read and write, and that opened up his world. By mid-1970, as Gabriel neared the age of 20, he stood six feet two or three inches high. Wow. His long and bony face, well made, was marred by a loss of two front two, two front teeth, and two or three scars on his head. Now I do have a picture of him, but it's not a great picture of him. You can't really see his scars, but it's a few pictures of him. Uh, white people as well as blacks regarded the literate young man as a fellow of great courage and intellect above his rank in life. Gabriel planned the revolt during the spring and summer of 1800. On August 30th, 1800, Gabriel intended to lead slaves into Richmond, but the rebellion was postponed because of rain. The slave owners had suspicion of the uprising and two slaves told their er their <laughs> I had to laugh at this because we always betray ourselves. And two slaves told their owner, Mosby Shepherd, about the plans. He warned Virginia Governor James Monroe, who called out the state militia, 
Gabriel escaped to down escaped down river to Norfolk, but he was spotted and betrayed there by another slave. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. For the reward offered by the state. Wow. <laughs> That slave did not receive the full reward. And did he think he was going to get it all? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Gabriel was returned to Richmond for questioning, but he did not submit. Gabriel, his two, uh, whose two brothers, and twenty-three other slaves were hanged. So that that was all that man's children, with all all his sons were killed. The historian Douglas Eckert. Eckerton offered a new perspective on Gabriel in his book, Gabriel's Rebellion, the Virginia Slave Conspiracies of 1800 and 1802. He did this, wrote this in 1993. Eckerton found that Gabriel was a skilled blacksmith who was mostly hired out by his owner at Richmond Foundries, hiring out this way that slaveholders earned money money from their slaves whom they need less for labor as they had reduced the cultivation of tobacco as a crop. Egerton concluded that Gabriel would have been stimulated and challenged at the foundries by interacting with co-workers of European, African, and mixed descent. That's where Toussaint the Overture's rebellion came in place. Y'all got it now? The connection Mm -hmm. He was talking and working and, like I said, interacting with co-workers. Um, they had hoped Thomas and Jefferson Republicans would liberate them from domination by the wealthy Federalist merchants of the city in the environment. Gabriel also would have heard about the uprisings and struggles of slaves in St. Dominique. That's Haiti. Mm -hmm. All right. Egerton believed that Gabriel had two white coast conspirators. When I was telling you, mm -hmm. it was white too. Not, it was not just black slaves. Mm -hmm. At least one of whom was identified as a French national. Uh, Saint Dominique was a French colony mm -hmm. before it became Haiti. He found reports that document that documentary evidence of their identity or involvement was sent to the gov to Governor Monroe but never produced in court and suggested that it was to protect Jefferson's Democratic Republican Party. The internal dynamics of Jefferson's and Monroe's party in 1800s elections were complex. Definitely. Because <laughs> it sounds like it was the Democratic Republican Party. One party. Mm -hmm. One party. A significant part of, Republic, of the Republican base were major planters, colleagues of Jefferson and Madison. Egerton believed that any sign that white radicals, and particularly Frenchmen, had supported Gabriel's pad, plan could have cost Jefferson the presidential election. Okay, really? so they didn't do nothing to the to this co-conspirator. It says they it never was produced in court. They didn't do nothing to them. They knew who they were, but they didn't do nothing because they thought that it would uh, cost Jefferson the presidential election of 18. Wow. Slaveholders feared such violent excess as those related to the French Revolution after 1789 and the rebellion of slaves in St. Dominique, Haiti. Egerton believed that Gabriel planned to take the governor to take Governor Monroe hostage to negotiate an end to slavery. Then he planned to drink and dine with the merchants of the city. <laughs> Lord, we learn from our past mistakes, that's for sure. That's why we tell it that's a past mistake. <laughs> you, you, it, that was a uh, during enslavement, so there was a South, North, and South. They had not had the Civil War. Mm -hmm. It had not taken place. Egerton noted that Gabriel did not order his followers to kill all whites except Methodists, <laughs> Quakers, and Frenchmen. Rather, he instructed them not to kill any people in, in those three categories. During this period, Methodists and Quakers were active missionaries for manumission, and many slaves had been freed since the end of the revolution and part due to their work. 
The French were considered allies as they had abolished slavery in the Caribbean, Caribbean colonies in 1794. I hope y'all are catching this connection because last time we was on here, me and Dr. Moss, we were talking about uh, General Toussaint L'Ouverture's connection with Gabriel Prosser. And I've been telling you this connection all along. Mm -hmm. Gabriel initially escaped on a ship owned by a former overseer. Egerton found out that he was recently converted Methodist who repeatedly overlooked information as to Gabriel's true identity. A slave hired out to work on the ship turned into Gabriel. Boy, we people are something else. This on the ship now. The man had got away. <laughs> he had got away. And then a slave uh, hired out to work on the ship turned into Gabriel, seeking the rewards of the uh. his own freedom. The state paid him only $50, not the $300 advertised. Well, I had talked about that earlier, but this broke it down a little bit more. Gabriel's uprising was notable not because of its results. The rebellion was quelled before it could begin, but because of its potential for mass chaos and widespread violence, kind of like what's happening today here. Mm -hmm. In Virginia in, in 1800, 39.2% of the total population were slaves. They were concentrated on plantations in the Tad Tidewater area and west of Rich Richmond. No reliable number existed regarding the slave and free black conspirators, most likely the number of men actively involved numbered only several hundred. Wow. Some Virginia slaveholders were nervous about the sharp increase in the number of free blacks in the state, in the slave state. They were uneasy, I know they were. Because I see some pictures of Gabriel's uh, uprising and you know, they had hatches and white folks was being chopped up. Well, black folks was being hung. Yep, but burned. actually, he never had the, the uh, uh, rebellion. It never took place, because he was told on. Those yeah. are just pictures that they had, but that scared white folks enough. Uh, they were easy as well, by the violent aftermath of the French Revolution and the uprising of slaves in the 1790s in St. Dominique. In 1792, France granted some social equality to free people of color. And in 1793, French revolutionary commissioners in St. Dominique granted freedom to all the slaves, whites and free people of color, some who were also slaveholders immigrated as refu refugees to the, United, to, the, to the U.S. during the years of the upheaval, now known as the Haitian Revolution. They added to the population of the free people of color in Charleston, Richmond, Richmond and New Orleans. In addition, slaveholders brought thousands of ethnic African slaves with them, especially adding to the African population of New Orleans. In 1804, the black and mulatto revolutionaries succeeded in gaining freedom, declaring the colony the independent black nation of Haiti. Gabriel had been able to plan the rebellion because of a relative lax rule, rules of movement for slaves between plantations and the city. And as so many had been hired out and others traveled to and from city on errands for their masters. After the rebellion, many slaveholders greatly restricted the slave rights of travel when not working. Fear of a slave revolt re regularly swept major slaveholding communities. Gabriel Prosser joined the realm of his ancestors on October 10th, 1800. That's our story about Gabriel Prosser and the black slave rep, uh, revolts. You can go to the internet and find out more information about him. There is a book called uh, Black Thunder, which is written by Arna Boatemp. Black Thunder. Black Thunder. And her, the, the, uh, the author's name is Arna Bon, B-O-N-T-E-M-P-S, Temp. And it's about his revolution. Uh, Gabriel's motivation had been 
his devotion to the ideals of the American Revolution, it was worth risking death to secure liberty. Uh, the end of slavery and the furtherance of equality of all people has prevailed in the light of our story. And adding that it is important to acknowledge that our story favorably regards Gabriel's cause while consigning legions who sought to keep him and others in chain, chains to be forgotten. Hallelujah. Okay, that's our story of Gabriel Prosser. And as I said, if you want to know more about him, just Google Gabriel Prosser, G A B R I E L. Prosser, P-R-O-S-S-E-R, -S -S -E and you can get much more information about him. Mm. This is a little bit more to this, but I'm going to end our story with him on this and um, let Miss B get to her story about the, uh, the this woman. Wednesday women. Wednesday women, but also mm -hmm. Eater Savage yes. was a... Uh, he is Savage Jennings. Woman of yes. Of the civil rights movement, Unsung hero. Which y'all probably never really heard about. Mm -hmm. So I had never heard about you, the Savage Oh, there's several of them in this book. This book is called At the End, At the Dark End of the Street. It's about black women, rape, and resistance. A new history of the civil rights movement from Rosa Parks to the rise of black power. Who is it by? And it's by Danielle L. McGuire. After the end of telling our story about uh, Eat of Savage, you can give the name of that book again. All right. Yes, definitely. Uh, actually, um, Miss uh, Edith Savage, she was a legacy of the civil rights movement, especially uh, uh, Freedom Summer of 1964. And the Quiet Revolution began in Mississippi when a group of black and white women reached across the chasm of race, class, geography, and religion to end segregation in America. And this was quite a revolution and it was called Wednesdays in Mississippi. Miss Edith Savage Jennings was one of those women and in the summer of 2010 she became a mentor to the leaders of Black Women's Blueprint and Shaping Vision, uh, positioning the organization's work on human rights for black women and the extension of civil rights movement. In 2011, uh, Freedom Fighters, uh, Edith, Edith Savage Jennings gave Black Women's Blueprint a gift, a historical table where she herself sat with the late great Coretta Scott King and several other notable women and leaders in black history. And that was on Monday, April 23rd, 2012. The table finally found its new home within the new offices of Black Women's Blueprint and the Museum of Women's Resistance. Uh, Edith Savage was decor was a de is a decorated pioneer of the civil rights movement whose fight for racial justice began at the age of 12 when she became a youth member of the Trenton chapter, chapter of the NAACP. She, uh, she is a distinguished civil rights leader who de delivered inspiring messages to more than a hundred of the NASW New Jersey members at a guest of the annual membership celebration and the board installation dinner. She has been right here. She is uh, in the Women's Museum of Women's Resistance. Uh huh. Oh, that's it right there. I'll speak on that. That's okay. Okay, here, you can do that. Well, you know, you had it up. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, one thing I did want to say about uh, the women Wednesdays, because a lot of women, a lot of people didn't know about the Wednesday women. A lot of people knew about the Thursday women, uh, the third, the ladies that met on Thursdays, but we never heard about the women meeting uh, on Wednesdays. Uh, these Wednesdays in Mississippi brought black and white women from the north to visit with black and white women in the South. Do you see John in there? I'm sorry, but because if he ain't in there, then he ain't put the picture up. 
Uh, the teams of women traveled to Jackson, Mississippi on Tuesdays. And they traveled across the state on Wednesdays to work with Freedom Schools, and Freedom Schools still exist today. And they returned home on Thursdays. Tell them about the Freedom School we have here in Flint. Just, now, you know. yeah, okay, Freedom School here, there are three here in Flint. Okay, in Flint, Michigan. In Flint, Michigan, yes. And these schools where we teach, well, now they're not just for black students. They're just encouraging uh, all students to embrace themselves and to love themselves and to care about themselves and to respect themselves and to also know your history, uh, know where you came from. And this is an encouragement uh, a, a, a device to prevent violence. When you loving and care about yourself, you don't think more about violence. We're teaching wise decision makings, uh, not only with uh, violence, but decisions about yourself, caring about yourself. There is, and one of the main uh, characters of Freedom School is to teach African history. Uh, yes, and we have a mixed group of children, and yes, they are learning about Africa. You know, the, uh, the continent of Africa. Okay. Yeah. Different countries. Different countries. In the continent. We even have a giant uh, puzzle. A giant puzzle of Africa where the students can actually put the countries on there where they know. Okay. And it's it's beautiful. But Freedom School well, I, is well, a. Like ask, Catherine, ask Catherine how many uh, countries are in Africa. Me? Yeah, no, the other Catherine. <laughs> how many countries in Africa? Oh, how many is it? Uh, I forgot. 71? It sounds about 53. right. Uh, it sounds about it's it's a lot, man. People and I have I talk to people all the time. We think Africa's one nation, and I just groan. How <laughs> do you realize it's a huge continent? Now, I think it's 53. I'm not sure. I, I'll, I'll I know look it's it up. a lot of them. I'll look it up. Okay. Okay. I can because we want to be sure. But uh, what I was going to comment on when you said about respect that they you got to teach them to respect themselves. Respect themselves. So when they're respecting themselves, they will learn they, to respect others. Others, and yeah. they don't want to harm them. They're, and we're teaching them: you are human. We are of a humanity race. And I use when I say human, I use uppercase H U E, right. and then. Man. Yes, we are of many hues. Thank you. Many colors. Human. Yes, <laughs> many colors, and we're all when we cut. We all bleed the same it, red blood. According to that's fifty four. Oh, fifty four. Fifty four. Oh, I wasn't off too far. They added. I know they added a new country like we did too here. Where I did think. I get seventy one from? Swaziland. Swaziland. I think they added that as part of Africa. I think because it's an island off of. The continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. Oh, that ain't. You're not talking about Madagascar, are you? Well, ain't that Swaziland? No, I think Madagascar is still Madagascar, but um, they could have changed. I mean, they have changed names in the past few years on several nations in this I past don't know. twenty years. Madagascar is Madagascar. <laughs> it might be the capital of Swaziland. Yeah. I have no idea. That is still <laughs> Africa, <laughs> and still yes, Egypt Africa. is Africa also. Yes, just in the located in the northern part. Absolutely. And they've been trying to make it a part of the Middle East, but it's, it's not. Africa. It's Africa. Y'all get get learn your geography. Thank you. I say that right. Learn your geography and get a map, and so you can see where these different countries are. And where they're located and mm -hmm. inside of Africa, just as well as a map of the United States, so you know where the state of Kentucky is. Yeah, and Africa is one of the richest nations in this world. And, and one of the largest, I think it's. It is the uh, largest, yeah. I don't know if it's the largest. Yeah, it's la larger than. Well, Asia is. Like Asia this. with. Uh, Asia might. They have different. But uh, Africa is it. Is it? Yes. I thought it was something. Okay, we're going to leave that alone. Because I had something else in mind on that one. What? Uh, okay. Uh, Canada and all that. Oh, no. Uh-uh. No. Uh, including, they call it the North America part. Of it. No, no, no. Okay. No. Okay, moving forward. No. <laughs> moving forward. Going over. Okay, and for the primitive reasons for safety, the women worked in single race groups. You can understand why too. But always make sure to have one mixed race group meeting on during their trip. 
The Wednesdays in Mississippi continued in the summer of 1965 with a slightly more professional focus on teachers and social workers and in 1966 Workshops in Mississippi, a program to help black and white women and their families achieve better economic conditions. And the National Council of Negro Women um, continue to work in Mississippi communities today. Wednesdays in Mississippi was the only civil rights program led by the National Women's Organization. Now listen to these organizations that were with them the National Council of Negro Women, the National Council of Catholic Women, the National Council of Jewish Women, Church Women United, hey, hey, the Young Women's Christian Association, the League of Women Voters, and the American Association of University Women. Right. These women came together. Only on Wednesdays. Only on Wednesdays. And they went around to different cities. Cities, and yes. Fighting and for equality. Well, they had to, there were so many problems, especially uh, with the black women. And as you read this book, you'll find out about all the rapes, uh, all the uh, crazy things that was happening to women. Women had issues. Black women could not you could t take your assailant to court but nothing would happen and there were so many many times horrendous things was happening to black women and the only way that they could voice their opinions they had to bring white women in with them the first woman to meet with the white women wednesday club was Edith Savage Jennings. Okay. She was the first black woman to meet with them to help bring them together. Because they, the white, it took these other women. But actually it just takes us all to work it together. Absolutely. You know, one actually just can't do, in this country, really truthfully, we just cannot, cannot do, do it by yourself. Each other. Mm -mm. We need each other. So we need to get this divide away, move it out of here, right. and come together as one nation, right. under God, right. individually, you know, okay. come together and be together in this country, because they say, you know, when your hand is open, mm -hmm. and stuff flies through, but if you build, close it up as a fist, that's unity and you can, it's much stronger. Well, if you want to know more about the Wednesday's Women's Project, you know, this is something that is not, has not been in our history books. I found out that this is housed at the National Archives for Black Women's History, located at the Mary McLeod Bethune Council House in Washington, D.C. The collection includes the drafts of the original mission statements, the reports of the meetings, personal and official correspondence, individual and organizational reports, team debriefing audio tapes and transcripts. The debriefing details the events that transpired and outlined the project's successes and their failures and it identified by the teams while the reports by individual women added a more introspective assessment. I want to go there. I want to go there and see this because I did not know that there was a museum. Well, I guess you could say it is it's housed in the, the Mary McLeod Bethune's Council House. Mm -hmm. I really want to see this collection. I would love to see this collection. And you will. Yes. You will. Absolutely. Uh, John, can you put up the picture of her with the gray hair? Of, of, it's up. It's up. It's 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 already? Yeah. Okay. I just had to want to add one more thing. Are you done? Mm hmm Okay. Uh, they called her uh, pre uh, N-A-S-W-N-J President Christine James called her one of our nation's most important advocates for racial equality and praising her incredible story of courage and determination and the impact it had on her own, it had on our nation. Outside. Absolutely. That's our story mm -hmm. about Miss Edith Savage Jenny. And if you want to know more 
go and get this book at the dark end of the street black women rape and resistance a new history of the civil rights movement from rosa parks to the rise of black power this book would really enlighten your mind Name on a lot author. of things. And the author is Danielle L. McGuire. All right. That's our story about Edith Savage. Jennings. Jennings. About Wednesdays in Mississippi women, women's civil rights legacy in our spaces. And about the black slave revolt, the North American slave revolt one which took place in Richmond, Virginia, and started by Gabriel Prosser. Prosser. And like we said, all this information you can get on the internet or get the book, as Miss Catherine said, at the end, at the dark end of the street by Daniel L. McGuire. McGuire. All right. That was awesome. And I like that when you find stuff that of uh, 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 our story about people that you really don't know about, right? Not the mainstream that they they're always putting up in front mm -hmm. of us, and that's what they teach in school. There is so many people mm -hmm. who have done things in this right. country to make it better. Because I know the Thursday afternoon club exists here in Flint. Mm -hmm. Those were women from the National Association for Colored Women. And they met on Thursdays because that was the only day that they had off back in the day when they first uh, formed. Okay. Got it. Got it right. Okay. The Wednesday women. Yeah, because, oh yeah. <laughs> so, Taurus Black History Corner Internet Program comes to you via satellite at allpointstv.com. You can watch our program every second and fourth Monday of the month unless the day falls on a holiday starting at 3.30 p.m. Also, be sure to watch what's going on with political pundit Dr. George Moss every Monday at 2 p.m., who at this point in time is in Europe this time. For the last five or six years, he's been going to different countries in Africa, but he's over in the Netherlands, John? That's what I think he was, said he was heading. He's also going to other countries, but you know, in Europe, basically, you can travel around pretty quickly. They, you know, with, between countries. So yeah, yeah I so. hope he go to Belgium. And that's I think he was going. He to wants to go. I, I know he. I told him that's where the bust of uh, 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 Nefertiti. That it is the Belgium. Well, the, that's the the Belgium. The bust we see today uh -huh. is from Belgium. That's not the original. Oh, okay. But they have the original over in. Belgium. Okay. Museum. Okay. Okay. And they did a redemption, redent, what do they call it? A bust of her mm -hmm. in their own. Making, okay. Okay. Like the one that you basically see all the time. Okay. Okay. All right. As always, I like to say a Santi, a Swahili, a Swahili word for thanks to all of you who have watched our program today. And if you like what you have seen and heard, please pass it on to others. Amen. Until next time, my God-given, incredibly awesome, great, powerful, and strong people. All right. Keep on keeping on with us. Hotep, which means peace. Peace. And I meant every one of those words I said. They are very strong. We are some strong people. Amen. Otherwise, Amen. We still would be here. Wednesday women. I said, what? See, we